Morning or evening, Grace brethren and sisters. Good to have all of you back along with us here on this uh, fine Thursday evening. Uh, currently still in central Alabama. Looking forward to the day whenever we'll be in upstate New York. My last summer and all this hot, humid weather. But thank the Lord for His grace and for His mercy and allowing us to meet again. And just pray that the Lord would uh, continue to uh, be with us throughout these uh, times. And uh, do pray for us here this evening. Got a uh, Got a stopped up ear, but uh, but we're still able to preach it. Man, had some things happen, like I had a bit of a migraine and some other things happen. I wasn't able to go street preaching there like I planned to, but we are going tomorrow. Tomorrow is the plan, and so uh, just pray for us as we plan to go back out again tomorrow. We'll try to take a couple of pictures or uh, maybe even video, st video us street preaching a bit. But uh, just pray for us. Pray that we'd be faithful and God would use us. Thank you for thank the Lord for a special a couple of special blessings actually that He's given to the ministry. We uh, we do thank the uh, thank the Lord for that. Don't take it lightly. Amen. And so uh, continue to uh, pray for us that God would use us and uh, and to be with us. And I keep praying for my mother-in-law. Going to try to call again tomorrow and get that uh, back surgery, her, her back surgery uh, scheduled. So we'll do pray for that. And uh, pray for all the needs out there among us, that God be with us and help us, and God would give us another revival, amen, that we go forward to the cause of Christ, whatever the need might be physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually. Let's uh, just do pray one for another. And we'll go ahead and I have a word of prayer. Our Father, we love you. We thank you for the ends of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives. And just pray you continue to lead God and direct in the way that you'd have us to go, Lord God, be with all those sick in body from all they get that back surgery scheduled. Pray, Lord God, Lord, for all those out there that are that are a physical heal, that you'd be with them, Lord God, those financial that I need financial help, those with a spiritual needs, emotional needs, whatever it might be, Lord God, you know what they stand in need of, just supply it for them, Lord. We do pray, and I pray, Lord, that you just uh up, uh, preach us here this evening. Just help us as we go over this study. Help us, Lord, to be a blessing. And just uh, help us, Lord God, the ministry to expand and to grow and to be what we ought to be to build your kingdom, Lord. For it's in Christ's name we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. And I uh, got, uh, got, uh, well, we do have one thing new, but just a, uh, uh, some, uh, some announcements that are getting closer now. Uh, first, we'll start off with the, uh, with the new thing. And the new thing is, is that our videos are we're adding to them we're adding to our studies we are now going to be uh, meeting of course on sunday sunday morning and sunday night as well as tuesday thursday and friday so we're going to start doing three week videos as i said we're going to try to do those every tuesday thursday and friday as some of you know we have things happen and you know like uh we can't uh sometimes you know we're a bit delayed and we apologize for that but we are going to do three a week you know that's going to be the schedule tuesday thursday and friday if things happen you know we'll adjust those as we uh, have to but uh that is the uh but that is the plan and uh, we thank the lord for it the lord just put that on our hearts as uh you know as uh so uh so, you know, we just want to go forward with that, with this ministry, if that's what God wants. You know, I'm already a very busy person, you know, with the commentaries that I write. And, uh, like now, you know, we're starting to travel again, you know, to raise support to move to upstate New York. But the Lord put that on our heart. So, it's kind of what we're talking about tonight, just the ministry and all in our study. But that's what the Lord told us to do. So, uh, so we did. And we uh, thank the Lord for that. And it's good, though. It's good to be busy for the Lord like that. So, that's kind of what we're going to be uh, going over tonight a little bit. And, uh, so, uh. So we'll just uh, so put that out there. Hopefully, hopefully folks enjoy it, and uh, hopefully we're a help to people. If it only helps one, you know that's enough. If it, if it don't help nobody but me, hey man, then that's enough. But that's what the Lord laid on our hearts, and so that's what the Lord has led us to do. And so we thank the Lord for uh, for this ministry, and uh, for uh, once again for us expanding even more. So. Of course, whenever we, of course, uh, looking to the future, though, like, you know, just months to the future of the fall, obviously, we're moving to upstate New York, so uh, we're still going to do videos, you know, things might change then, like, especially if we started church, you know, then, that, of course, that'll be even greater, you know, like, we started church, you know, then we'll, uh, we'll try to, you know, or try to a video the messages, you know, that we preach there in the, uh, you know, there in the church for folks. So, you know, we might have to exchange around some days. You know, after we moved upstate New York, you know, we've seen, you know, we're starting a church go door and I can't et cetera. But we still are going to do videos, though, you know, may not be as much in volume. But for right now, though, that is the plan. And so, uh, so we thank the Lord for that. So continue to pray for us. Of course, as we said, the book that we wrote, The Ministry of Prayer and Fasting, that is going to be published this coming week. 
So today is Thursday. So next week, though, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, one of those days, that book will be out. And that's something I'm actually going to start doing. I don't know if I'm going to do that every video, but at least for about half the videos, we are going to put, uh, we're going to leave that in the description below. We're going to put that on our website, the book patch, with who uh, publishes our books. We're going to, we're going to put that down there. And we're also going to start putting our contact information on there as well. If anybody would like to get a hold of us, you know, email us on Facebook. They can do that as well. I didn't really think about that before, even though I watch preachers do YouTube videos all the time. And that's what they do. You know, they put, you know, down in their description box, you know, they put their websites, you know, where you can buy their books, etc. And so uh, I just that just never occurred to me. But uh, like up until like earlier today, I actually thought of another another brother, actually brother a Threepland, who's at Following Truth. I know that's what he does. He said you can buy my books down the description below. I'm like, oh, why didn't I ever do that before? So uh, so that'll be down there as well, like where you can buy the books from the bookpatch.com, as well as our Facebook page, our personal account, our email address, if you want to uh, contact us in that facet. And so. Uh, and so just uh, keep that in mind and take a look at that. And also, like, uh, I guess one thing that is new, though, like like, like I said, we're still going to be meeting on Tuesday and Thursdays. And on uh, for starting next Thursday, we're going to begin a study in the book of Amos. We're going to go through all. My plan is actually to go through all the minor prophets. We're going to start in the book of Amos. That's what the Lord laid on our heart. And so we're going to start in the book of Amos there and then, you know, progress throughout all the uh, throughout all the minor prophets. So, uh so uh, keep that in mind. Hopefully, folks, look at that. Amos, a great, great book, one of my favorite books of the Bible, and so we uh, look forward to that as uh, as well. And also, speaking of which, like I said, I know the Ministry of Prayer and Fasting will be out next week, but also those other commentaries, not that Amos is one of them, Amos and Jonah, especially Amos and Jonah, those will be out published very, very soon as well. So uh, so if you like those books, as you like all the Bible, those will also be available. Like I know Nahum and Habakkuk as well, and uh, that, that won't be too far from now. Also, the Song of Solomon, like Nahum and Habakkuk will be in one book, and then the Song of Solomon, that'll be one by itself. That will be out very soon as well. Of course, the book of Leviticus, that'll be out in a, that'll be out in a, like in one, like maybe in one to two months. Of course, I'm still writing that, but almost finished with it. So that will be out as well. And so we uh, thank the Lord for the gift that he's given us to do that to write. We don't take it a lot. We just want to exercise our gift to the best of our ability. And of course, also the, uh, the revival, the revival that we have. Of course, that is just, uh, of course, that is just now. Yeah, pretty much like uh, two we uh just a little more than two weeks away, so that starts the twentieth of July. So uh, pray for us then. Goes twenty to the twenty fourth, and we will also be doing a promo video for that as well. Uh, for that video, it won't be long, but you know, just reminding everybody if you want to share that, you know, share that on social media. That'll be uh you know that'd be really appreciated. Of course, any of these. Like, you know, if you're uh, looking, uh, watching us for the first time on YouTube and haven't subscribed, you know, please, you know, go ahead and uh, subscribe to us and turn on notifications. And also that gives us more face, that gives us more YouTube traffic, you know, and that's what YouTube needs. Not, not doesn't need me, but it needs Bible preaching. And that's what I also try to do for the other preachers and buy good Bible teachers out there. And so, uh, so remember all of uh, these things as well. Of course, as we said, a lot going on here with our ministry, Word Awakening, and thank the Lord for it. Amen. Thank the Lord for keeping us busy for His work and to do His will. And tonight we're actually going to be looking at one of the first articles that I wrote. If you get our newsletter, and I said we'll leave our email address down there below. If you want to get that, we put out a newsletter every week, every Monday. And this was actually one of the first, kind of came in maybe about the third or fourth edition of the newsletter that we did. And uh, the name of this here is Cooper to continue the work of Haggai. Of course, talking about me. Me to continue the work of Haggai, the prophet. So the question may be asked, why did I start Word Awakening? Of course, this was first known as According to the Word, but the Lord just led us to change, to change the name to be more descriptive of us with the Word of God and of our heart's desire uh, to have another great awakening. But, you know, the uh, question might be asked then, why did, uh, why did we start Word Awakening? Why did we start this ministry? This, you know, Bible and, uh, you know, this uh, Bible, you know, Bible preaching, Bible study ministry. Now, I'd like to compare myself to a Bible character and say that I'm continuing the work of Haggai. Of course, we'll give you a description here of the prophet Haggai. 
He was a minor prophet. He prophesied during uh, 520 B.C., and he was a post, what's known as a post-exilic prophet uh, right after the Jews went back to Jerusalem after the exile. He was a... Uh, he was uh, he was the first, he was one of the first prophets there on the scene, like Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They were the three post-exilic prophets, with like Ezra, Esther, and Nehemiah being the three post-exilic history books. And uh, of course, I believe that the prophet Haggai he was a young child whenever Judah, the southern kingdom, was uh, taken to Babylon. And then he began his ministry when he was around 80 years old, an elderly man, about 16 years after the Jews returned to Jerusalem from Babylon. And the Jews' main obligation during this time of Haggai was to rebuild their temple so that they could resume their worship. However, the people were more concerned about making their own houses nice rather than the Lord's house, like it says in Haggai 1.4. Haggai asked them, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? See, a striking contrast to American Christianity in the 21st century. That's just like we said, you know, like last Tuesday, like whenever we did that study on Ezekiel, you know, who was a, who was a prophet uh, during the exile, whenever uh, Israel was going into Babylonian, Babylonian captivity. See, people are self-centered, and they're making their own selves look nice while indulging in all the entertainment that they can find, as the kingdom of God goes to nothing. See, the USA has a declining church attendance, and it goes further into immorality because churches continue to compromise and they go apostate. See, why is it that, uh, that young people aren't interested in the things of God like people of my generation? Because the older people really aren't all that interested in it. They go to church, but they are very half-hearted. They're very half-hearted. They're hypocritical. They've gone prostate. They've compromised so much, there's nothing interesting at all about church anymore to people. And that's why young people just choose not to go. Because people are so half-hearted about it. They have more enthusiasm. They're more excited about the ball games and what the world has. The hunting, the fishing, uh, the sell down at the mall and all. Just like Haggai says here, they're more interested in making their own house nice while the house of God goes waste. They have no enthusiasm, no, no, uh, uh, no excitement about the things of God. So interested in all the world has to offer and they don't give God a thought. They let the kingdom of God go waste while they build their own house. And that's exactly what's needed in this day and time, amen. That's what the Lord told me. Another Haggai is exactly what's needed in this day and time. People need a preacher to preach to them, to get them back excited and enthused about building the kingdom of God. Because they're so into everything else that the world has to offer. Churches are just full of half-hearted Christians who go to church on Sunday on Sunday, and they seldomly pray or read the Bible. You know, as I know, we've already documented, you know, in all this work. You know, we have pastors and preachers today who hardly study the Bible. They know more about sports, movies, what's on television, than they know about the Bible. And just like Haggai said in his book there, chapter 1, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You better consider your ways. Especially, you really saved, and you belong to God. You're a member of a Bible-believing church. You know what the Bible says. At least to some extent, you know in your heart that you ought to read it, that you ought to study it. You better consider your ways. Whatever it is that's just got you deceived, where you spending more time in front of that television, spending more time out on the golf course or whatever it is, than spending time with God, you better consider your ways. What has you deceived? It's like I've said before, I believe, I believe with a lot of people, the devil's just got them convinced that they can't be great. Like you talk about, you talk about these men. Uh, you know, Bible characters, Haggai, Nahum, Habakkuk, Samuel, Ezra, uh, Moses, you know, David, Solomon. You know, you pick out, you know, just pick out whoever great, great men of God, no doubt. But why is it that we don't have the same enthusiasm that they have? Why are we not trying as hard as they are? Why? 
We just think we're not, we're not good enough. Well, no. Truth be known, we're not good enough, but God is, amen. He's the same God now as he's always been. I believe, I believe, like, we'll look at it in a little bit, see, even those Jews in Haggai's time, that's part, part of what their problem was. You know, they didn't have nothing. You know, they just came back to Jerusalem. You know, they, they didn't think they could be as great as those Jews back, you know, during Solomon's time. But God's still on the throne, amen. He's still God. Same, you know, with the, the, the men of the Great Awakening, John Wesley, George Whitfield, Charles Finney. What, what do they have that, that we don't have? There's one thing that they have that we don't have, and that's God. I mean, look at all that they didn't have. That was before they even had cars. Like I was just reading earlier, like John Wesley, George Whitfield, and Charles Finney, they rode around on horses, circuit riding, preaching everywhere. You know, like Charles Finney on horseback, he rode all around upstate New York preaching and doing the Lord's work. John Wesley rode horseback all over England doing the Lord's work. That's before they even had the technology that we had now. You know, they weren't even, they weren't even able to make videos like this. Why were they so wonderful? Because they gave God everything that they had. They spent more time with God than they did the things of the world. Now, I'd like to look at a passage of Scripture. Let's we'll go over to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 4. This here, one of Paul's pastoral epistles to the young preacher Timothy. Let's look here at 2 Timothy 2 4. says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. See, the phrase, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, is referring to, is referring to a preacher being in a secular business. See, a man of God is to be available at any and all times to do the Lord's work. Then it says there that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. See, like, uh, well, this text here is kind of like comparing somebody in the military to a preacher. Like it says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. See, obviously, like a person in the military, that's the only job that they had back then, and, you know, mostly now. Because, you know, they had to be willing to go to war at any and all times. You know, anytime anybody was going to, you know, was going to attack Israel. They had to be, they had to be ready to go to war. And Paul's telling Timothy, you know, that's really the same thing here. You know, you got to be, you know, you've been chosen by God to be a soldier for God. You know, you've been called to preach into the ministry. You know, you've got to be, you got to be ready to go to work for the Lord at any and all times. You know, whatever the Lord would have you to do. Like if a crisis happens and they need you, they they need you as a pastor or you know whatever the situation is, you know you're going to be a church planner. You know you need to give God, you know you need to give God all of that time, you know to plant that church. You know you don't also need to be in a in a secular vocation. Now, like I know there are some pastors and all who who work in secular vocations, and that's obviously between them and God. The time we live in financially, some people have to do that. But preachers are are sorry are to live off of the support of God's people. So that they can, so that they can do their ministry. You know, that's how it's always been. You know, like right now, I'm, I'm writing that commentary on the Book of Leviticus. You know, almost finished with it. That's how it was in the Old Testament. Like Aaron, you know, and the priest, you know, that they lived off of the offerings of the people. And just like we're going to look at here, you know, like the, you know, the, the men of God in the New Testament, you know, they did the same thing. You know, they lived off of love offerings and, you know, the support of God's people. It's like that great theologian, you know, Adam Clark says in his commentary on this text here in 2 Timothy 4. He says, you know, a man of God should come out from behind the cash register, you know, out of the woodwork, etc., and rely on God so that he can build the kingdom of God. See, a minister isn't supposed to have his heart on making money. That's like what Paul, you know, recently told, you know, was telling Timothy before, like in 1 Timothy 6.10. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See, apostles and ministers, you know, of the Bible, you know, they were not to live 
luxurious lives, but, you know, live on the bare necessities. See Mark chapter 6, verse 8. Like, I know we've, I think we've been over this text before. Like in, uh, you know, in one of our studies here before. Like, we'll just look at one here in Mark 6, 8. That's also said in a couple of other areas. Like in Mark 6, 8, it says, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse. But be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. See, like they, there's, you know, like the Lord's telling them, you know, why do you need two coats? You know, just take one. See, and I continue on the text here. And he said unto them, in what place wherever ye enter into a house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And, while, and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I said to you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Let's see, like he says, whatsoever place you enter into a house, you know, you abide there as long as you can. See, they were to live on the bare necessities, like it says there. You know, you live off of the support of the people, like of the, you know, of the houses and the people that you go into, those people who take you. Obviously, some people won't accept you, you know, and you just, you know, you walk out of that house. But those that do take you, you know, you dwell with them as long as you can, you know, as long as they'll have you. And, you know, you live off of the support that they give you. Like some people, you know, might accuse full-time preachers, you know, like full-time preachers, you know, who don't work secular jobs as being lazy men who just want to sit on a couch all day, you know, or fish all day or, or be in some type of recreation. But see, this very next verse here in 2 Timothy 2.5, you know, debunks this idea. It's like 2 Timothy 2.5, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Like in verse 6 as well, the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. See, masteries is referring to the Olympics. See, like the Olympics was the popular sport in that time around Israel. See, the Apostle Paul wants Timothy to be so busy, you know, in his work for the Lord, that, uh, you know, that he don't have time for sports and entertainment. That's exactly what he's telling him. You know, you don't have time to play ball. You don't have time to be in the Olympics. You know, you want to have fruit. You got to be a husbandman that labors. See, that's like, you know, the Bible says people reap what they sow. You know, like in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and in Galatians 6, 7. See, a man who blows his time, never studies, never visits anybody, never, you know, tries to win any souls, never tries to spiritually guide people. He's going to have a dead ministry. And he's going to produce very few disciples. You know, that's, that, that's, that's what hap what's happened recently. You know, we have too many dead preachers, too many dead ministries, too many dead preachers that do just that. You know, they spend more time in recreation. Not, not all of them. I know some great preachers, but a, lot, but a lot of other preachers as well. You know, they spend more time, you know, doing secular things than they do the Lord's work. You know, more time in, you know, luxury, fishing, hunting on the golf course, etc., then they do the Lord's work. But see, in contrast, a minister who rises early, we're actually going to do that study as well. I wrote an article about that, about the, that's around the same time I wrote this article some months ago, about rising early. See, like it says in Proverbs 8, 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. See, you ought to rise early. See, like that was another principle, like of those great men from the, you know, from the great revivals, like John Wesley, George Whitfield, you know, like a Matthew Poole, Jonathan Edwards, you know, they all got up out of the bed at four or five o'clock in the morning, like John Wesley and George Whitfield, you know, they'd get up at four o'clock, they'd get, they'd get up, I believe, at like four o'clock, and they'd be out street preaching in the fields at five in the morning. Like also, you also find that text there encouraging people to rise early in Psalm 57, 8, Psalm 63, 1, Psalm 108, 2, and Matthew 21. See us in the Bible quite a bit. See a minister who rises early and spends hours studying the Word of God. We'll just go to one there. We'll go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 11.
Give it right away. Here we are. First Thessalonians 4.11. And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. Of course, also 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. See right there, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See a minister who rises early, spends hours studying the word of God, praying, you know, winning the laws, visiting the sick and elderly, is going to have a powerful ministry. See, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna reap what we sow. See, so it's like we've also mentioned and, and wrote a lot about here, like in uh, like in Word Awakening or the Great Awakening revivals. You know, just like the apostles, prophets, and servants of the Bible, they did a mighty work for the Lord. The preachers of the Great Awakening mimicked them. George Whitfield, John Wesley, Jonathan Edwards, Charles Finney. They were men who got up early in the morning, spent hours studying, praying, writing books, writing books, writing articles, writing sermons, fasting on a regular basis. Now, while it is true that every individual has their own gift, they do have a gift, amen. They have a gift and they ought to stir it up and use it to the best of their ability. See, just like Paul also told Timothy. 1 Timothy 1 6. From which some having swerved have turned aside. Sorry. Let's see here. I don't believe that's the one that I want. Maybe that's the second Timothy. Yeah, second Timothy. I'm sorry, I second Timothy one six. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Hey, just like in the very first edition of this article, like we mentioned him a lot, and I know when I the revival and all that we had like Daniel Nash, a co laborer with Charles Finney. You know, he was a man who didn't write any books. He's not largely remembered by most people now. He wasn't even he, he wasn't even really known outside of upstate New York, but he had a very powerful prayer and fasting ministry. He saw revival twice in his lifetime. You know, while God certainly does make people different with their own personalities, their own abilities, every preacher has some ability, and they should stir up that ability. Of course, main issue with this often is time. I believe, I believe, like I said, I believe, first of all, there's a lot of people actually believing that they can be anything for God. And then secondly, it's time. I believe every man of God that's been called to preach has the desire to be in a full-time ministry. You know, you show me a preacher that don't desire to be in a full-time ministry, and I'll show you a man that's probably not really been called to preach. If a man's in a full-time ministry, give God all your time, amen. I'm in a full-time ministry. Well, give God all your time, amen. Be full-time for God. Make much of God in the gift he's given you. Have a heart for God and him alone. Matthew 6, 21. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your heart at? See, while we live in perilous times, that should motivate us even more. It's just like I said. Like, what do we need more of now? We don't need more ball players. We don't need more, you know, we don't need more actors, more actresses. We don't need, you know, we don't need any more of this, that, and the other. You know, we need preachers more than anything. You know, I certainly believe even more than other good secular vocations. I mean, it's, you know, not bad if God doesn't call somebody to preach. You know, God, obviously, he leads people, you know, to be medical doctors, nurses, lawyers, you know, businessmen, whatever. But we need preachers really more than anything. Now, just like I said, you know, that's certainly what we need more of. We need more. We need more haggy eyes. We need more people who are going to rebuild the who are going to rebuild the kingdom of God. You know, we don't have a godly colonial America anymore, you know, like they had during the time of the First Great Awakening. Just like the Jews of Haggai's time, you know, they didn't have they didn't have Solomon's beautiful temple anymore. You know, the temple they were building was plain and dull, you know, compared to compared to Solomon's temple. We have that text in Haggai 2.3. Like it says in Haggai 2.3, like Haggai, 
Haggai asked him, Who is left among you that saw this house in our first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Kind of, we actually preached from Haggai a couple of weeks ago that message. And just like it also mentions in Ezra, like we said from the beginning here of this video, like uh, like I believe, especially Haggai, you know, he was uh, he was he was a man who saw Solomon's temple, you know, before the Jews went into Babylonian exile, like some of the elderly men did, like it says in Ezra, you know, and they were very sad, you know, they saw how beautiful and wonderful, you know, Solomon's temple was, you know, you can read about that in the Book of Kings, you know, now this temple here, you know, it didn't look nothing like compared to Solomon's. But just as the temple these Jews built produced the Lord Jesus Christ and a greater glory than Solomon. See what Haggai told him here in verse 9 of chapter 2. He said, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. See, who's the Prince of Peace? Jesus. See, this temple here, right now it didn't look like much, but it produced, it produced, it had a greater glory than Solomon's did. This is the temple here that produced the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we still can see our own revival and lead many people to Christ. Like, no, we don't have a godly colonial America anymore. We live in 21st century America now, the 21st century. You know, I know we live in perilous times. We live in a very ungodly society. But, you know, we can still see our own revival. God's still on the throne. Same message Haggai told them. God's still on the throne. Still need to be working for God. That's the same message, amen. We need to rebuild the kingdom of God. I know, we've lost a lot. What we have now doesn't look anything like it did years ago. But God's still on the throne, amen. They can still see that glory. See, and you're accountable. You're accountable for your own self. You know, I can't. I can't speak for the generation before me. I can't speak for them. You know, I'm not going to give an account for them, but I'm going to give an account for me. I'm going to give an account for my ministry, and this generation is going to give an account for itself. Amen. That's what I pray for every day. That's on my prayer list. I pray for this generation, the people of this generation, people living now, no matter where they live, no matter what country, what state or whatever, people of this generation, that's what we need to be praying for. Because we are going to give an account, amen. And yes, I know it's going to get worse. I know I know the back of the book. I know Revelation. I know it's got to get so bad the Antichrist comes on the scene. But just like also in the Old Testament, that prophet Zephaniah, and like King Josiah in that time, you know, when Judah, they saw a revival for their generation. Just like us, you know, we can have that same type of revival. Yes, it's going to get very bad. But the same way Zephaniah and Josiah saw a revival before Judah went into captivity, we can have the same thing. This generation can have a revival. This generation can say we gave it everything that we had. We've seen a revival. We won people to the Lord. So say, let's give our best. Let's give God everything that we have and do our absolute best, amen, and stay excited and get excited about the things of God and put Him first. So in conclusion here, we'd like to personally thank all of you, you know, for reading our articles, the way that you support this ministry. You know, I actually, you know, like ever since I, uh, ever, that's right, like right whenever I first, you know, started this ministry, it's like whenever I met, uh, like I've told the story, I met a good, I met another good brother in the faith. He was actually the physical brother of my best friend from the military, you know, who passed away. Like I met him back in back in January. Like whenever I, you know, whenever I started this, whenever I started this ministry, I believe, I believe I actually like met. Him. I actually, I believe he actually called me like after I did. Yeah, like I believe after I did the very first Sunday sermon on here about the ministry of prayer and fasting. And so you know when. And he's been a good, a great supporter for us. And I thank all of you out there who've supported this ministry, who's prayed for us. And, you know, this ministry here does, goes hand in hand with our church planning ministry up in upstate New York. You know, we want to see another revival. See, if we can help you, you know, folks in any way with any resources or any prayers, don't hesitate to let us know. We thank all of you who do believe in us here, amen, as we strive to be the Haggai. Of this generation. Let's do that, amen. All of us, not just me. I can't do it alone. I want everybody out there listening to be as to be a part of this ministry as well.
to pray for us, to walk hand in hand for us, you know, pray for revival, do what the Lord would have you to do, you know, and even like other ministries, other preachers, you know, that uh, that I listen to, I want us all to unite as one and be one and go forward, amen, for the cause of Christ. So thank you folks so much for uh, for listening to us. And uh, as we said, you know, we don't take it lightly. We do thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much for your support, for your encouraging words. And just continue to pray. Pray that this ministry would grow and that uh, and that uh, we would do what we ought to do, amen, to build the kingdom of God. But we ought to be, like I said, thank God for this technology that we have. This is something that they didn't have back then. You know, they just had snail mail writing. But I'm glad we can meet over the cyber waves and pray over the cyber waves. And uh, let's pray for one another, do the Lord's work, and do His will as we said. Be back here tomorrow night, our first Friday, our first Friday video. So up in the ante a little bit. But, uh, you know, we thank the Lord for us. Thank the Lord for uh, having us do it. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be looking at. I've got a couple of things in mind. But, you know, wherever the Lord leads us, you know, we might be writing another article and doing, uh, and, uh, doing that tomorrow night. Or, you know, it could be uh, something that the Lord has already given us, like this article here. I've got lots, lots of good things, quite a few good things that we've never even mentioned outside of these previous articles before. So y'all folks do pray for us as we study, you know, as we as we ride, as we go street preach. Like I said, we, we're all going to go street preaching tomorrow, you know, unless, you know, something really bad happens. Or like we have bad weather or something, you know, so weather permitting and all. We're going to go, and health permitting, you know, we are going to go street preaching tomorrow. Like I said, do pray for that as well. Like I said, I got a stopped up ear. And like I said, I had, I had, I'm starting to have migraines again. They're not nearly as bad as they were last summer, but I had them last summer. I had them last summer really bad. I think a lot of, because last summer I was on the same diet that I am now. I was being a lacto-vegetarian. I wasn't getting enough protein in my system. I was getting dehydrated. So do pray for us. Pray that we stay hydrated and get enough protein and God will be with our health. Amen. And uh, so just pray for us. We'll be praying for all of you, amen. And we'll uh, close in a word of prayer. Our Father, we love you. We thank you for the goodness of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the many blessings you've bestowed upon our hearts and lives. Thank you so much for your love, for your grace and mercy. And pray we'd all just be that witness that we ought to be, Lord, that you'd raise up more Haggai's, more Nahum's, um, more Habakkuk's, more Samuel's, more Ezra's, more Moses's, as, as well as the ladies, Lord. Raise up more Phoebe's, more, more Hannah's, more Esther's, more Ruth's, Lord. It's what's needed now. Above everything, Lord, it's more people that love you, who want to be like you, who want to be like the great men and women of the past who live for God. We don't need any more fictional superheroes or more sports athletes. We need people who love God. We need more haggy eyes to pick up and to build the kingdom of God. And just help us do that, Lord, to be faithful and just lead God and direct him. Whether that happens to go bless our dear listeners, be with those on the bed of affliction. I like my mother-in-law, Lord, may she be healed. And all those that stand in need, whatever the need is, just touch them and help them. I pray physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. Those that are lost, convict them and save them. Those discourage, encourage them. Those backs to claim them. Just help our dear listeners. We pray, bless them, double the good. I plead the blood. Just lead God and direct them where you have us to go, Lord, for us in Christ's blessing. And we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, folks. I am Brother Cooper, and we will see you tomorrow night, Lord willing.